Welcome to cooperatives and companies as vehicles for collaboration. These vehicles can take you and your farming venture where you'd like to go. It's important to choose a legal model that is fit for the purpose you have in mind. So there's some questions you need to ask. Firstly, where would you like to go and why? Is it just for profit or are you aiming for social or community benefits? How would you like to get there and who will travel with you? Answers to these questions are unique to each group. There are several models available to farmers who want to work together. Unincorporated options are good for less formal arrangements. These include partnerships and unincorporated associations. Incorporated options use formal arrangements and are better suited for industry promotion and collaborative ventures. These include the incorporated association, the company and the cooperative. Partnerships carry higher personal risk. Unincorporated associations do not suit many farming businesses and incorporated associations are mostly used only for marketing activities. For this reason, our focus is on the best two models for collaborative farming businesses, the company and the cooperative. Because they are incorporated, companies and co-ops offer greater power and protection in the marketplace and limit the risk of participating farmers. The company, focused on profits for shareholders, aims to be sleek. The cooperative must also be profitable, but focuses on creating benefits for its members. Before we explore these models, let's look at the benefits of incorporation. All corporations are separate legal entities. This means they engage in business separate from their owners. They can enter into contracts, even with members or shareholders. In fact, the cooperative is specifically designed to do so by contracting members for the supply and purchase of product. In addition, corporations can take out loans and insurance, employ staff and own property or farm machinery. Another advantage of incorporation is that the owners, the members or shareholders, have limited liability. This means they are not personally responsible for the debts of the corporation. This limits risk. A corporation owner's debt risk is limited to their shareholding. Beyond vehicle choice, there are other questions to consider before registering a farming business. What are the individual and shared reasons for doing business together? Can the group achieve those goals more efficiently by combining forces? And governance. Who will be responsible for business decisions? Also finance, particularly at startup. And importantly, will it be for profit or not for profit? Asking these questions will help you choose the right model that's fit for purpose. The for-profit or not-for-profit choice has tax implications. For now, let's look at the features of companies and co-ops to understand how each vehicle might fit the purpose of a collaborative farming business. There are two main company options for farming businesses, the private or proprietary limited company and the public company, limited by shares. A public company can be listed on the Australian Securities Exchange, providing it with access to global investors, or it can remain unlisted. Both types of company are owned by shareholders, whose equity or shareholding determines their level of voting control. Each share carries one vote at a general meeting. A proprietary company must have at least one and a maximum of 50 shareholders, but public companies can have many shareholders. Share price varies depending on the company's performance and shares which attract dividends can be bought and sold. Use of public capital provides opportunities for speculation and can expose companies to market volatility and takeovers. So what do these features mean in practice? And what purposes suit the company model? Ultimately, the company is a vehicle for investment. 
Its purpose is to make a profit for shareholders. Not all companies start like this. Some family farms use the proprietary company because it can minimise personal risk and distribute income across the family. Larger agricultural companies have the power to attract investment through share offers. Some of Australia's largest agribusinesses are companies. With the exception of small family farm companies, where the owners have a strong interest in the business, a company model is best suited to passive investment by shareholders, who are not necessarily involved in the business, but who believe in its potential for profit. For individual farmers, the PTY LTD is a simple corporate vehicle to manage some risk in the family farm and which provides the farmer with ownership and control. If the family farm is bigger, finding extra capital will depend on profitability and it may be difficult to get outsiders to invest. A public company model can widen the call for capital, but as each investor joins, the original farmer loses more control. If the family farm expands to include more investors, the farmer becomes less like an owner and more like a shareholder. The more control the farmer retains, the less attractive the investment to outsiders. In this sense, a balance needs to be struck between control and raising capital. The company structure is like a pyramid. The profit imperative provides the focus. The shareholders, investors, are the foundation and provide the company with its capital and also its purpose, the maximisation of profit or shareholder value. The shareholders elect a board of directors to govern, often professionals with business knowledge and experience. The board of directors acting on behalf of shareholders usually recruit the CEO to focus on day-to-day -day operations. The directors and the CEO share the focus of running a profitable business. Profits flow back down to shareholders in the form of dividends. A key point to remember about this model is that shareholders can be remote from the business function. They can leave or join by selling or buying shares. A co-op, like a company, is a flexible business vehicle. It can have many products, projects and associated ventures and it can change focus over time. Let's explore cooperative features and the purposes that best suit that model. There are two main types of co-op, distributing and non-distributing. For now, just remember that a distributing co-op can distribute profits to members. This co-op model has shares like a company, but is run differently. Unlike companies, cooperatives are designed to share their members' interests. They are controlled by and run for their members, rather than for remote or passive investors. Members vote on similar issues to company shareholders, but each member only gets one vote, regardless of how many shares they own. No member can own more than 20% of the co-op, so there must be at least five members. Members can be entities, including foreign entities, only if they meet the active membership rules for participation. In a co-op, shares have a fixed price because the focus is on creating member value rather than profits, and only members who actively participate in the co-op can hold shares. Shares can be traded between members, but they can't be sold to outside investors. This limit and restriction on trading means that co-op shares are not speculative securities. Cooperatives are relatively protected from the ups and downs of global and national markets. Despite the fixed share price, distributing co-ops can and must make a profit. They return profits to members through rebates on goods and services related to the volume of member transactions within the co-op or sometimes as dividends on shares. Because the focus is on the creation, protection and return of value to members, the majority of directors must be members. So, what do co-op features mean in practice? And what purposes do they fit? 
The co-op model is best when five or more members cooperate for the common purpose – to create, protect and return value to members. Value is delivered by providing services through shared cost and effort. Members share power equally when making decisions, like electing a board or changing constitution rules. Importantly, members must be actively engaged in the business. In a grain selling co-op, for example, members are the producers or buyers of that grain. They must commit to selling or buying a minimum amount each year. In return, members might receive higher prices or discounts. When profits are flowing, members might also receive dividends on shares. Because members, not passive investors, own the business, co-ops create a self-sustaining mutual enterprise. This diagram shows that creation of member value is the core of the cooperative purpose. Members are intimately connected to this purpose through the election of the majority of directors from their ranks and through their regular and active participation in the primary activities of the co-op's business. This purpose, member engagement and how it is governed make the co-op very different to a company. These features also make the co-op an ideal model for collaboration where there is more that is collectively invested than just capital. Once you've understood your group's individual and shared reasons for collaboration, you might have an idea of the model you'll need. But how that model will be governed and financed, especially at startup, are also important considerations. So let's look at those. Corporate governance refers to all of the decision-making groups, the types of decisions they can make, and the processes those groups use to make decisions. Governance for companies and co-ops have similarities and differences. For both, the board of directors decides how the business operates. A company board usually has professional directors while a co-op must have a majority of farmer members as directors. Both co-ops and companies can establish committees to help the board to make good decisions on finance, markets or other challenges. Members or shareholders usually vote at member meetings on director elections, constitutional and structural changes. In co-ops, members can also vote using postal or internet platforms. This summary of company and cooperative features includes Ownership Companies are owned by one or more shareholders, while co-ops are owned by five or more members. Power Important decisions are made in general meetings, such as who the directors will be. Voting power in a company is determined by the proportion of shares a person owns. In a co-op, governance is democratic so each member has one vote, regardless of their shareholding. Control. In a company, shareholders can elect directors, usually on the basis of their capacity to maximise profits to increase shareholder value. Directors often have specialised professional experience, but may have no other interest in the business operations. In a cooperative, the members also elect the directors, however, a majority of these directors must be members. The co-op's board aims to maximise member value, which is defined by each cooperative and often includes associated member services. Responsibility. Both company and cooperative directors have legal and ethical duties to act in good faith, in the best interests of the corporation and among other duties prevent the business from trading while insolvent. The boards of both a company and a co-op have the power to manage the business and make the necessary decisions to keep it operating. The exception for a co-op board is that major decisions which affect member services must be made by members. The combination of farmer members on the board and this restriction on the board's power helps ensure that member value is the focus. Participation. As we've mentioned, company shareholders need not participate in the main activities of the business. 
but cooperative members must. And lastly, purpose. A company aims to maximise shareholder value through profits and capital returns. The purpose of each cooperative differs, but generally involves the provision of member services to build strength, economic resilience and member value through cooperation. Any new farming business needs to acquire funds to get up and running. So let's look at startup finance. Capital instruments, known as securities, can stimulate investment in a company. The most common is the share, a document that represents equity. Another instrument is the debenture, which represents debt capital or a public loan. Debentures are an IOU from the company to the debenture holder to repay the amount given plus interest. Hybrid securities, like preference shares, combine both debt and equity. Other startup options include bank loans, fundraising events, government or private grants, gifts and donations. Some of these are more common in the not-for-profit sector. Cooperatives have similar startup finance options. Shares are available to members. However, the price of these shares is fixed on issue. The co-op must repay this price if members leave. So it's important for a co-op to engage with and serve its members to retain value in the business. Affordable member fees can also raise funds. Co-ops can borrow from their members or from the public. To do so, they issue debentures or hybrid securities known as cooperative capital units, CCUs, these do not carry member voting rights. Just like companies, co-ops may also seek startup capital through bank loans, fundraising such as crowdfunding campaigns, grants, gifts and donations. Do you remember the advantage of incorporation? A separate legal entity can limit personal risk and liability. Well, of course, this brings extra responsibility and regulation. Both companies and co-ops must register with at least one corporate regulator and pay registration fees. Companies must provide a constitution, which includes specific or standard rules from the Corporations Act. Cooperatives submit a tailored constitution and a disclosure document, setting out their business plan and strategy. Although the process for registering a company seems easier, in practice, both models require a business plan and strategy in order to run a successful business. For this reason, it is important to choose the model that is fit for purpose. Before setting up a collaborative farming business, be sure to familiarise yourself with the main corporate regulators and their key functions, 